What is going on, Titan Nation? Yes, we are doing, I am doing a morning show. Uh, I'm usually off on Monday, so I wanted to get a show together, especially with all of the Malik Neighbors stuff coming out on Twitter. Um, we're going to get into it. Is it fact or fiction? Is all this stuff about Neighbors just, you know, fodder on Twitter and people trying to shoot a man down? and all this type of stuff. And also, he's visiting the Tennessee Titans. He's on the list with the, a few other players, which we'll discuss. Let's get it rolling. Hope you guys are having a good week already and tighten up, everybody. Let's go. Whether it's the regular season or the offseason, we have you covered. As we give you the best Tennessee Titans and NFL news and insight that a fan could ask for. You're watching the Titan Upload Network. All right. What's going on, everybody? Happy Monday. Um, I know most of you might be at work. I, I'm not sure. If you're if you're at work and you're tuning in, we appreciate it. If you're not at work and you're tuning in, we appreciate it too. Tighten up that like button for us. Um, we've been rocking and rolling on the channel. We did. We actually did a, a little WrestleMania uh, live show last night, just because me and Upload were we're both big wrestling fans. So we figured, what the heck, why not? And that was pretty fun. Thank you uh, to all of you who stopped by for a few minutes. Um, but it was it was a good one. I thought um, the best. Mm, I wouldn't say the best WrestleMania of all time, but it was pretty good. Um, but anyways, I wanted to get you guys. I want to get your thoughts on uh, Malik Neighbors. Um, yep, yep, I'm early today, man. I figured what the heck. Um, uh, Frazier says, Neighbors had combine, combine visits, private meeting, now a 30-day visit. So, um, yeah, and that's, uh, I think it's awesome. Um, you know, I would not be disappointed if the Titans selected Neighbors. You know, they're going to need a wide receiver. Um, regardless, uh, come next year. I mean, D-Hop, this is the last year of his contract. He's getting older. I, I wouldn't say they're going to renew it unless D-Hop just goes crazy all out this season and gets an insane amount of yards and, and we go deep into the playoffs. I just don't see Hop being back for, for next year. So, obviously, they're going to need a wide receiver. Um, so, you guys go check out um, – Chris Fraser, he's got a he's got a Facebook page, Tighten Up for Life. It's awesome, one of the biggest ones out there. So check that check that out if you haven't yet. Go uh, follow that page and join that group and all that stuff. And yeah, we're gonna get into that, Chris, for sure. Um, I got some graphics. You know, we got the graphics here at the Titan Upload Network. So we're gonna throw those on the screen here in a minute. Top tier, let's go. Thanks for tuning in, man. You are. You're you're always here, and we appreciate it, and uh, we appreciate you too, Chris, and whoever else is watching. Um, I know we are live on Twitter and Facebook right now. Um, if you're on Twitter, um, it, I, I wish Twitter would let you comment live like Facebook does and just kind of because, you know, you embed the link into Twitter and, you know, you can watch it right on Twitter. But if you're on Twitter, uh, please give us a like. Just Click on the link real quick and boom, do that for us. Uh, we'd greatly appreciate it. If you're on Facebook, let us know you're on Facebook. You know, comment, uh, shoot us a comment. We'll put it on the screen here. And, uh, you know, we appreciate all the support from everybody out there um, across all of the platforms that we stream upon. It's been pretty cool. Um, we got a special thing tomorrow night. You guys are not going to want to miss it. I, I, don't think I can release it yet. I, I don't think upload is is releasing anything yet. But special show tomorrow night. You guys got to tune in for it. It's it's going to be absolutely awesome, and I, it's going to be a real treat for you, uh, for all Titans fans, NFL fans alike. So make sure and tune in tomorrow night. All right, enough of me gabbing. Let's get to the business. What we're here for, Malik Neighbors, all the stuff coming out about him. Dov Kleiman uh, on Twitter, who's always posting stuff. Um, I don't know where the original Neighbors stuff came from. I've been 
looking online this morning to try and figure out where it originated from about Malik Neighbors and his character issues. Um, if you guys could let me know where it actually originated from, I would appreciate it um, because there's, you know, there's all these sites um, out there who who have reported it and things like that. Um, I, there's one called Brobble, Probable. Um, there's one called Clutch Points. I mean, there's all these different sites, so I don't know exactly where it. Um, you know, originated at. So if you're in the chat or on Twitter or whatever, pop over here and let me know what ex what exact site this story originated from. Now, um, as far as uh, Jordan Schultz, who um, sends me stuff on Twitter all the time, on Twitter Messenger, he always sends me his reports, which I appreciate it. Shout out to Jordan Schultz. He posted this today. Um, there is... So much wrong with this report. I don't even know where to start. To attack a young person's character with anonymous quotes less than three weeks before the NFL draft is flat out wrong. Malik Neighbors deserves better. This stuff happens every year during draft season, and largely most of it is false and is being spread to get a player to drop. Stop with this. So what do you guys think about this? You know, like... um. You know, Jordan Schultz, I'd say he's he's pretty credible. I mean, he's he's pretty well known um, across the sports media world. Um, I like that he posted this because this stuff always happens. And if it's not credible, um, then we really can't rely on the information. If it's not credible about Malik Neighbors and all this stuff, we can't really say it's for certain. And we all know on X slash Twitter, whatever you call it, um, Instagram, all the different social media, um, people are going to try and tear you down, you know, no matter how big or how small or how significant, I shouldn't say small, how significant say your social status is, or you are technically like in this world, as far as if you're just a common man, if you're a, uh, you know, actor, an athlete, a sports guy, whatever, Somebody always is out there who's going to try and take you down if you're doing good things. Like if you're trying to be successful, especially if you're putting yourself out there on social media, if you're putting yourself out there in the media, if you are a, a sports player, an actor, anybody that, that gets any type of media attention, somebody's going to try and tear you down. You know, um, we've had it happen. On this network, I mean, we've had people who've tried to tear us down, who've tried to uh, say false things about us that are that are actually um, ridiculous. And and you guys know that we are uh, we're a type of crew here that we just love communicating with the fans. We don't have anything bad to say about anybody. I mean, really, we don't have anything to bad bad to say about any channels any YouTubers, any Titans content creators. It's all love here, right? We love the fans. We love you guys. We appreciate the support. So with all that said, you know, all this stuff coming out about neighbors, is it true? We don't know. Fact or fiction? Let me know in the comments. Let me know what you guys think about neighbors. And, uh, you know, and, and about what's going on. Um, I, I'd like to post it on the screen to get your thoughts, um, to get your opinions about Malik Neighbors. And do you want Malik Neighbors? Do you want the Titans to draft Malik Neighbors? There are a lot of people out there who talk about um, wanting Neighbors over Joe Alt. There's a lot of people out there. You know, and Chris Frazier, he says this is going to make him drop to seven. Hey, if, if you want neighbors, if you're in the neighbors thing and you want neighbors as the Titans, maybe this is a good thing for us, you know. And look, I'm not going to, if the Tennessee Titans draft Malik neighbors and Joe Alt is there, okay, look, I'm in the Alt camp. I want a left tackle. I believe at this point in time, considering you have Calvin Ridley, I feel like 
Alt, if he's there, for one, is a top seven pick, right? And could be your career left tackle. I'm tired of the Tennessee Titans failing at left tackle. You know, yes, okay, we keep picking up tackles in the draft. That's kind of, it's a running joke now. But Joe Alt is a, is a step above any of the other tackles that, at least coming out of college, that we've had a chance to draft. You know what I mean? Like he is that next level offensive tackle, could be a career guy, could be your next Taylor Luan. You know what I mean? But at the same time, I understand it. I get it. Like if neighbors drops a seven and he's there, you're talking about a potential next Jamar Chase for uh, Brian Callahan. You're talking about a guy that is an absolute game wrecker. I mean, he's he's an absolute game changer. You know what I mean? I mean, the guy is just the speed, the ability, the catch radius, to be able to stop on a dime. Um, he is just insane. I mean, 4.3540 at his pro day, um, which is awesome. I mean, that's tops in the league. Um, he's a he's a playmaker, 42 inch vertical. So, I mean, the guy is just absolutely um, incredible, you know. So, I don't know. What do you think? Do you want neighbors? It, it, we've talked about this till we're blue in the face, right? We've talked about it on this channel. We talked about it on Twitter. We've asked Corey Curtis. We've asked, uh, you know, um, James Foster from A to Z Film on this very channel, which I'm going to play a clip from him in a second, an audio clip, uh, where – from our channel, he was on our channel, uh, this was a couple months ago, and he was talking about neighbors. But what do you guys think? I mean, do you want neighbors? Are you concerned about the issues, about the supposed off-the-field issues? What do you guys think about it? We'll get to your comments. Thank you so much for tuning in. Tighten up that like button if you haven't yet. We got 84 in the house on a Monday at 10 a.m. Hey, I'm happy about that. If you're on Twitter, come on over. Give us a like. Subscribe if you haven't yet. Guys, we have been absolutely on a tear this month, and it's all because of you. Um, it, it's insane what's been going on here at the network. Um, we are almost to 14,500 subscribers. We have I think we're close to 2,000 in just this one month. Um, I'd have to check that to, to be absolutely certain. It's been wild. It's been all because of you. You guys rock. And look, you know, we appreciate you. Um, we appreciate you a lot. All right, let's get to some of your comments here. Um, thank you guys so much again. And then, um, let me scroll back here so we can get going. Top tier is in the building. He said, let's go. MB, what's up, MB? One of our longtime loyal followers. We appreciate you, buddy. He says, I can only pop in and out because of work. Definitely hit the like button, though. Yes, thank you, MB. We appreciate it. Um, the real cricket, the real cricket. If Alt and neighbors are both there at seven, you got to take Alt, in my opinion. It's an interesting conundrum. Yeah, I mean, like I said, we've talked about it here over and over again. We've asked Corey Curtis. We've asked James Foster from A to Z Film Room. We've asked Mike from the Titans Wire. We've asked, uh, who else have we asked that's been on the show? I've asked Teron Davenport personally. Um, and, you know, a lot of the consensus is Joe Alt. That's the consensus, right? But you never know. You never know what Brian Callahan is thinking. You know, he, I would say, just personally, I would say that Brian Callahan wants his wide receiver. He wants his guy. You know, there's a reason they went out and got Ridley because they love his speed. They love his ability. They love that he could play all over the field. You know what I mean? They they want to move these guys around. This is not the Tennessee Titans of old. This is not the, hey, we're going to run it. Um, 25 times with Derrick Henry, even though he's had 20 yards against the Texans type of Titans. This is not, this is not those Titans anymore. I, I hope it's not. I mean, I, you know, prayers, 
to the football gods that it's not um, because that's we want something different in Tennessee. And a guy like Malik Neighbors brings that. A guy like Calvin Ridley brings that. A guy like Brian Callahan brings that. So I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be, uh, you know, if they drafted Neighbors overall, I'm not going to go, oh my gosh, this is the worst they should have, blah, 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 blah. You know, you know, maybe, maybe they get a tackle in the second. Maybe they find one in the second that's a gym and, there you go. They shoot with that. If they fail, they try next year. Look, I'm not expecting the Tennessee Titans to be world beaters this year. You know, I know there's a lot of people out there who who were like, you know, all oh, the Titans are going to the playoffs. And yeah, look, I'm going to be real with you, right? Like, that's what we try to do on this network. You know, we try to be real with you guys. Give us your thoughts. And we all think differently. Me, Mike, the Power Hour Titan Upload. Uh, Tyler, Titans Time Podcast, James, you know, we all think differently on this channel as, as far as some of us think the same, but we give you all of our uh, honest opinions. And to me, the Titans right now are a ceiling of like eight to nine wins. You know, if you bring on a left tackle like Joe Alt, I, I think, you know, Maybe you're looking at a 10-win team. Maybe you get this offensive line where it needs to be. But right now, I'm thinking a ceiling of eight to nine wins, which is not a bad thing. You know, it's it's building. Um, if we had eight to nine wins this year and we were competitive in every game, I would be happy. I would, you know. Um, all right. Sorry, I'm rambling. Haven't seen that. Got to check that out. Are you you're talking about the Schultz thing probably? It's probably originated from the Giants who are hoping he's available at six. Top tier says CJ Stroud was getting bashed last year. How'd that work out? Rookie of the year. Um, one of the most phenomenal rookie quarterback seasons ever in the over 100 years of the NFL. There you go. Um, the neighbor stuff is BS. I agree with you. Yep, people trying to get you. Yeah, man, it happens, dude. You know, it is what it is. Um, we roll with the punches. You know what I'm saying? It is what it is. Um, we roll with the punches. We we love what we do here, and that's all there is to it. And we love all you guys. So that's all there is to it, right? Um, top tier. The stuff that came out about Stroud was the laziness of people to try and evaluate him based on a pencil and paper test. Ridiculous. Yes. And I, hey, man, I wish I could just pin this and and maybe we'll put this on a community or Twitter or something. But yeah, you're exactly right, man. You're exactly right. Titan Barney 78. Tighten up, brother. We appreciate you coming in or sister. Um, we appreciate you coming in. Uh, Kiron, Kiron, Kiron says, correct. I want a left tackle, too. Um, I'm not judging anyone. That's not my job. And I will never, and it'll, yeah, right. You know, what, what is the, uh, only God can judge me, right? That's the, that's the saying. Only God can judge you. Um, so yeah, right. Look, I have no, <laughs> listen, I'd be the first to admit, you know, I have no, uh, uh, justification to judge anybody for real. I mean, um, not saying that I'm like a bad person or anything, but you know, um, I've talked about it on the channel before I have a past, you know what I mean? I do have a past, but all of us have a past, right? Um, but it's what you do to overcome that. It's what you do to turn things around and, and be the person you were meant to be. Right. Um, and who knows, we don't know anything about it's all pencil and paper at this moment. And who are we to judge anybody without solid evidence? Solid, hard evidence that is real, that's legit. And, and like I said, you know, Jordan Schultz, shout out to Jordan Schultz. This is what he said earlier. If you, if you didn't see it and you're just now joining us, and I'll, and I'll say it again. I'll put it on here again. So there is so much wrong with this report. Now, this is from Jordan Schultz. He's a he's a pretty big media personality. I think I can't remember what show he's on. He's one of, on one of the big shows out there. 
So there's so much wrong with this report. I don't even know where to start to attack a young person's character with anonymous quotes last less than three weeks before the NFL draft is flat out wrong. Malik Neighbors deserves better. This stuff happens every year during draft season, and largely most of it is false and being spread to get a player to drop. Stop with this. So I love that he posted this. Um, I, you know, it's a great tweet. And like I said, shout out to him. Um, I love that he posted that. Let's get some more of your comments here. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. 113 in the building right now. That is awesome for a Monday. Um, some of you guys are on Twitter. Some of you guys are on if you're on Twitter, um, we would just appreciate it if you come over here and give us a like button. You guys have been like every show that I've been doing, you guys have been getting us to 50 likes like that. So on the short format, click the three dots at the top and then you can hit the like button. If you haven't subscribed, it just says it on the top in little red. It's, it's boom. It's real quick. Boom. Hit it. Um, so. We do appreciate you very much. Um, I'm not sure what we're at now. We're at 13 likes. So get those likes up for us. And um, yeah, we, it'd be awesome if you could. No big deal if you can't. No worries. We love you guys regardless. So either or. Um, all right. Let's get some more of your comments here. Um, let's see. Well, I got lost here. Here we go. All right, Grant, Grant McLeod, McLeod, I think that's how you say it. I'm an LSU alumni and fan in regards to neighbor. He had no character concerns at all. He's a really good guy, works his butt off and did so much for them. Everyone would love the guy. So there you go. I mean, this guy is an alumni. He's a fan. He's obviously loves LSU. Probably you know, LSU fans, I'm sure, follow neighbors way closer than anybody who's not an LSU fan, or if you're just a neighbors fan in general, I guess. But, um, yeah, I mean, there's nothing out there that's concrete that says Malik Neighbors is a bad guy. Don't draft him. He's this, he's that, he's yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You know, there's nothing out there. So, I mean, shout out to you, Grant. Thanks so much for uh for that comment. We appreciate it. And if you're on Twitter or X, Grant, you should post that on X. I don't know if you're on X. If you are, if you do post it, tag me at Titans Rossi and I will repost it. So, you know, if you do post it on X, if you got one, post it. I'll repost it. Tag me at Titans Rossi. That'd be pretty cool. I'd love to, I'd love to repost that. It'd be a lot of fun. Um, Volcano. Rossi, if neighbors and all are there, Titans are taking neighbors. Um, yeah, I mean, I could definitely see that volcano. I, I really could. You know, I mean, I, I like I said, you know, with with his speed, his ability, he's a game changer. He's a game wrecker. You know, I, I could see them doing that. And that leads me into this next part, Volcano. And I want to play this. Now, this is, we had made a short about this. So you could go back and watch the short. I think it's a couple of shorts ago, maybe. Um, it's the last short before Power Hour short. So if you go watch it, it's a good short. So um, James Foster of A to Z Film Room is a great friend of this channel. He comes on pretty much any time we ask him. I mean, he, he's so gracious with this time. Um, he, he's a draft expert. I mean, James goes to like all these different things. He goes to these, uh, coaching clinics and all this type of stuff. And if you've not checked out A to Z film room on YouTube, it is blown away. It, it's blown up. I mean, they have, he has more subs than the actual A to Z YouTube channel does. So it just shows you how good he is. And he breaks down film. Like I said, James Foster. So he comes on the channel a lot. We're going to get him on for draft stuff. Um, he, he, you know, we use a lot of his stats. You know, a lot of these, um, let's see, a lot of these type of things, they're James Foster's. Um, he made these. 
I mean, he may he has his, literally his own draft guide. Um, so shout out to him. We, you know, he he he's cool with us using all his stuff, and uh, you know, it's it's pretty awesome. So I want to play a clip now. This is an audio clip, so you're gonna have to you know listen in. Um, I didn't want to post the video because you know I don't want to get copyrighted or something. But this is an audio, and it's our own video. It it literally was on my show that he said this, but you can't repost video content on YouTube. They'll get you for it. So um, this is um, the audio clip from uh, James Foster from A to Z Film Room talking about um, talking about Malik Neighbors and cut off routes on the vertical plane as quickly as he can. Like he can be going full speed sink his hips just completely cut off his momentum instantly turn around and create like five to seven yards of separation on a simple you know eight yard hitch route like uh it's it's insane what he can do after the catch just eats up open space breaks tackles uh, makes people miss in the open field and if malik neighbors uh fell to seven and they ended up taking him you know, I would be disappointed because I, I still think that offensive tackle is a bigger need, but like I, I wouldn't be disappointed for too long because uh, Malik Neighbors would be a Titan and he's an outstanding prospect. Malik Neighbors, like, there's so there no you one go. In this class I think it's playing on a little bit. De- so there you go. That's what, um, that's what James Foster had to say about Neighbors on this network. This was that was like two months ago. Um, when he was breaking down the draft with, with me and James, Titans for Life, who is in the comment section here. And we will be live this week with James on the wide format in the Rossi Report. Um, I'm not sure what night yet. We usually do that Wednesday or Thursday nights. We'll figure it out, let you guys know. Come join us. Uh, James is awesome, and he's a very dear friend of mine. So he'll be on with me. You guys know him. Um, so, all right. There he is. There he is right there. Because both O-line and wide receivers are the two deepest position groups, they're really good guys at both position groups. Yeah. No, and that's the thing, too. It's such a deep draft. Um, It's a really deep draft when it comes to um, tackles and O-line. I mean, you got guys like, okay, for example, we'll run this down real quick. Let's see. Um, and like I said, these are all A to Z film room, his stuff. But I mean, his, well, some of these are just NFL combine numbers and stuff. So the guy that our very own James from our channel, uh, from our channel, he loves this guy, Talise, Talise Fuaga. This is a guy that he absolutely loves that is actually ranked on PFF as the second overall tackle right now. Fashanu's fell, according to PFF. Now, you know, that's not the end-all, be-all. But Fuaga is number two. Now, Fuaga is mainly a right tackle. Now, they're saying that he could switch to left tackle. The question is, do you want to draft a guy at number seven who is inherently a right tackle. You know what I mean? Or do you draft back? Deron Davenport posted a a draft trade scenario where you draft back and Fashanu's there and you pick up Fashanu or you pick up Fuaga. You know, that's an option too. The Titans would gain probably a, a second round pick maybe a third round pick, maybe two thirds, maybe a next year second, you know, that that's an option for the Titans. So you got Fawaga here. You got guys like JC Latham, who I heard is going to visit. Um, I think Lace, Latham is a right tackle too. Correct me if I'm wrong in the chat. Then you got guys, I think Tyler Guyton is another guy who's going to be visiting from Oklahoma. Very deep. Very deep draft. Then you got Troy Fontenot uh, from Washington, the tackle from Washington. Um, then you got Fashanu, who I, I love Fashanu. I don't see why he's fell. 
I really don't. Like, I think if you trade back and Fashanu's there, say you trade to number 13, number 14, to me, it's a no brainer. Like, unless you got a guy like Odunze that's available at that spot, you would have to pick Odunze, I, I would believe. Like, I, I mean, I don't see how you couldn't if he's there at like 13, 14, if you trade back. Um, now, when I talk about trading back, um, well, let's look at this real quick. So the top 10 tackles. Now, this is according to A to Z Film Room, James Foster, Joe Alt, Fuaga. No, I'm sorry. This is PFF's rankings. Apologies. Joe Alt, Fuaga second, Fontenu. I'm sorry. I don't know why. Let's see. Fuaga, Fontenu. Yeah, Fontenu's from Washington. I thought that said wide receiver for a minute. I was like, did I screw up this graphic? Anyways, Fontenu, Fashanu, Latham fifth, Mim sixth, Barton seventh, Guyton eighth, Morgan ninth. I'm not even going to attempt to say the last one, but he's 10th from, from BYU. A lot of people like that guy. He's a guy maybe you could get in the second round. Maybe Morgan. I think Jordan Morgan's visiting too. So a lot of these tackles are visiting the Titans. They're heavy on these visits with the tackles. So, which makes perfect sense, right? Um, so let's get to your, some of your comments. I want to show Teron's tweet too. Um, and I want to see what you guys think about this trade scenario. Um, sorry, I'm, I'm trying to get caught up here. You guys are commenting like crazy. We appreciate it. If you haven't hit the like button yet, please override, obliterate the people's elbow, whatever you want to call it, the like button. Um, you know, and, uh, it'd be awesome. We'd appreciate it. If you're on Twitter, come on over, smash the like button for us. Subscribe if you haven't yet. Um, so Titans for Life says, I still 100% think they're going O line in the first round. Draft and draft that neighbors. Top tier says, Prayers up, King Isaac. What's up, King Isaac? Tighten up. We need Amar is in the building. He says, We need more great players. Alton neighbors would be stills at seven. Yeah, I agree. I agree with you. I think either way. You can't go wrong. Either way, you can't go wrong. And I admit to make a poll, and that is my bad. I meant to make a poll. So let's go ahead and do that. Why not? If I can, if I can figure this out here. Yeah, let's let's make a poll for you guys in the chat. Um, let's see. What do you think about the reports on neighbors' character issues? Fact or fiction? Let's see. Fact, fiction. Can we add four? I think we can add four. Sorry, guys. I'm, I'm getting this done here. All right. What do you think about the reports on neighbors, character, action, character issues, fact, or fiction? Well... I don't know if it'll let me. Here we go. All right. All right. Sorry about that, guys. All right. Here we go. Boom. There's the poll. If you see the poll, give the poll a, a, you know, vote on the poll. I would like to see what you guys think. Um, I'm interested to see what you guys think. If you're on Twitter, come over, join in the poll. We'll get to it towards the end of the show, and uh, we'll see how you guys feel about it. All right. Lou Man. What's up, Lou, man? How you doing, buddy? Um, thank you for tuning in. Um, I'm way concerned with the character of those putting out his stuff out on neighbor. There you go. Boom. James. Thank you, James. Thank you so much. That is awesome. 
Um, we're going to post that on Twitter, buddy. So he says, I'm way more concerned. I'm way concerned with the character of those putting out his stuff out, putting out this stuff out on neighbors. That's fantastic, man. Yeah. I mean, these guys, you know, like I said, there it's, it's baseless as of right now. There's nothing that really tells us for certain that this stuff is for certain. Okay. Look at the guy. Who was the guy that got in trouble the other day? Was it Tavondre Sweat? Let me look this up. Okay. Tavondre Sweat, for example, right? He's a guy that got a DWI charge. Now, I don't know the details behind this. Some of you guys might. You guys are awesome in the chat. A lot of times, you guys got better takes than we do. Um, so Tavondre Sweat, former Texas football player was booked into Travis County Jail on Sunday and charged with driving while intoxicated. Intoxicated. Reports show Sweat 22 was arrested by the Austin Police Department and booked into Travis County at 2.12 p.m. And, uh, shout out to Travis County. We got a, where I work, we actually have a center in Austin and Travis County. So it's called Recovery Unplugged. If you guys ever need any help, if you know anybody that needs any help, um, you know, maybe Tavondre Sweat needs some help, you know, but give me a shout on, out on Twitter at Titans Rossi. Um, you know, I basically what I do for my work is I find people help for addictions, mental health, uh, trauma, whatever you got. If you need some help, seriously, no joke. It's not a joke at all. Shout out to me on Twitter at Titans Rossi. Direct message me if you know somebody that needs some help. You know, somebody that's struggling drug drug addiction, mental health, anything. Um, you know, we got seven centers nationwide. We got one in in Austin in Travis County. Um, inpatient, outpatient, virtual outpatient, mental health outpatient. Um, you know, we got seven centers all across the country. So, direct message me on Twitter. Um, I got a lot of resources and uh, I can help you guys out. So. Anyways, let's get back to this. He was booked driving while intoxicated as a class D misdemeanor. Sweat posted a $3,000 bond, was released from custody shortly after he was booked. Um, he walked out of the Travis County Jail with a mask and tower covering his head, posting bail on Sunday. He walked out with his attorney. He was named the Big 12. Conference Defensive Player of the Year and won the 2023 Outland Trophy for the best interior lineman in college football after leading the Longhorns to the Big 12 Championship in the college football playoffs. He's expected to be drafted in the first two rounds. So that's all it really says. I don't know if there's anything else um, out there about it. I don't know the details behind it. Of course, you know, in, in this great country, you're um, – Innocent, you're supposed to be innocent until proven guilty. Now, you know, we all know that people are going to say, they say they're going to make assumptions and all that type of stuff. So we don't know the details behind all this. Um, he hasn't been in the court yet, obviously, so we don't know. But it's not a good look. And it is pretty much proof that something happened. Nothing has came out about neighbors like that in the past. As far as I know, we had an LSU fan in here earlier talking about it, how nothing has is, is came out yet about, about neighbors or anything like that, you know? So, um, as far as that goes. So, give me just one second, guys. Sorry. All right, sorry guys, I had a had to do something real quick. My sister is messaging me, and apparently it's like a emergency or something. So let me do this real quick. Anyway, sorry guys. Um, let's see. Stevie Bowie Gordy TV says tighten up. I think social media hype will have taken him before seven. 
I love Dylan Wade. Um, Chiron says, uh, Rossi, I don't follow Burks before the draft, but his neighbor's exponentially better. Um, I, you know what? I, I would, yeah, definitely. I mean, I, I'd say, I, let, let us know what you guys think in the chat. Like, is, is neighbors, um, is neighbors better? Is neighbors more talented? Um, you know, is neighbors more talented than Burks was? So um let us know in the chat there. All right, let me get to some more of your comments here. We appreciate you. Sorry, I'm a little distracted right now. I gotta send my sister a text. So I appreciate you guys. Um, let's play this video real quick. I'm going to send my sister a text real quick, but this is uh, uh, from the press conference about the Titans, uh, about Rand Carthon and what he wants to build. Build a complete defense. Um, you know, and in, in, in the past, we've had our strength be up front, you know, and that's kind of shifted right now, but we're still looking uh, to address those positions as needed. Um, from a free agency standpoint, free agency is open, it's not over. So we're going to continue to look. And then obviously we got the draft, which is taking our focus now. Um, so we're going to continue to look to add, you know, up front um, on, on all sides of the ball. Um, but it, we're, we're still working on that. You said that. Uh... All right. There you go. Um, so he's talking about, you know, how he wants to build the team and all that stuff, you know. Um, so sorry, guys. I'm really. My sister's texting me right now. Let's see. I will be home in like an hour. Okay. Sorry about that, guys. Um, all right. Let's see what we got going on here with your comments. Sin City Titan in the building. What's up? One question that would rise if neighbors is picked is Burks now look more likely to be on the trading block candidate, uh, a, a trading block candidate. Yeah, I mean, I would think so. Um, you know, if they if they draft neighbors, I mean, you, yeah, I mean that would make sense. You know, let us let us know in the chat what you guys think. But yeah, no, I mean that would make sense as far as that goes. Like. Um, because then you're talking, I mean, you're pretty loaded. But also, you think of it this way, you know, next year, you're going to need a third wide receiver, you know. Now, with Burks, I mean, you would like him to step up this year. That's what you would really like. Like, that's what I'm hoping for. Like, I haven't given up on Corey. I mean, I haven't given up on Burks yet. And Corey Curtis, you know, he was talking about on our show he he wants to see what Burks can do. Like he wants to see if he can succeed. And, you know, I, I do too. I would love to see what Burks can do in the slot. Um, I really would. Um, and uh see what he can do and how he can help this team. Is he gonna step up this year? You know, I would love to see that. Um, so good question, Power Hour. And shout out to Power Hour. He will be live tonight every Monday night with Titans Time Podcast. They do a great show on Monday nights on this very network. So come tune in. Um, 8 p.m. Central Time, I believe. If I'm wrong about that power, let me know. But I believe it's 8 p.m. Central Time, 9 p.m. Eastern Time. And tune in and they'll be talking about all types of stuff on there. So I would say so power hour. Not going to get that much, though. Bring Vince Young back. Hey, I loved Vince Young. I mean, he was that one season he had, like his rookie season. I just felt like he kind of got a raw deal. Like, I don't know. I feel like he wasn't really Fisher's guy. So don't be surprised if they trade up with the Chargers for neighbors. Yeah. I mean, I could see that. They need to draft a QB. Well, this will be out of the league. Um, shout out to recover unplug. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, man. I try to, I try to, 
Yes, we do. We do take most insurance companies uh, as far as that goes, for sure. Um, keep doing that good work. We appreciate Man, I'm really far back. Sorry, guys. Yeah, man, no problem. Um, yes, definitely, definitely. Um, neighbors is much faster than Burks. Yeah, he is. I think he's a lot more talented than Burks, in my opinion. Um, neighbors is faster and has better hands than Burks. Burks. There you go. Vince Young apparently wasn't putting in much work either. Um, yeah, that's what I remember that, right? Like they, he, he, he didn't watch a lot of film. Like he never watched film or something like that. I think there was a report that came out that, and I could be wrong and you guys might know, but apparently like he didn't watch much film at all. And it was like, you know, people were questioning his worth ethic and all that. And that, you know, Fisher probably didn't like that. Fisher was kind of like, I, you know, he wasn't, of course, as hard nosed as Vrabel, but he was a defense first guy and all that type of stuff. Um, yeah. And no, I, I agree with you. Frantisek, is that how you say it? Boobable. Frantisek, boobable. I probably, I know I butchered that. They're not getting much value for Burks with his injury history. Um, no, they are not. So, um, I, you know, who knows what they would get? I think that, like, the, the question Power Hour asked, if they draft neighbors, um, you know, if they draft neighbors and say Burks has a pretty decent year, like he shows upside and he's he gets – you know, the yards that he needs to get and this and that, you know, you go in the next season, maybe, uh, maybe you want to get like an, uh, you know, a, a certified slot guy and maybe Burks doesn't really fill that role, even though he played that a lot in Arkansas, but as far as maybe you want more of a speedster, a quick guy, um, twitchy guy, and then you go in the next season and you got some trade value with Burks in. Cause right now I don't think there's much trade value behind them. I mean, you maybe. I don't know what you would get for Burks. You know, what would you get? Maybe a fifth round pick at this at this point. Power says 8.30 p.m. Eastern time tonight. I will be on myself. Everyone keep Titans time and your prayers and thoughts. Yeah, definitely. I'm not sure what's going on. I'll have to send Tyler a text. But, um, yeah, keep, keep them in your prayers for sure. Ben Chung. Okay, yeah, we got up there. So. Um, all right, we're going to go about 10 more minutes. I got to get going. Um, I'm actually at my girlfriend's now going live for you guys. Um, so I got to get back home here in a little bit, but we'll go about 10 more minutes. Thank you guys so much for tuning in today. We got the poll going on. Let's check in on the poll. Um, if I can figure out how to do it here. Um, let's see. Let me refresh this page. Okay, show the chat. There we go. All right, we got the poll going. We got 31 votes, which I didn't put the poll on till late, so it's not a big deal. But what do you think about the reports on neighbors' characters, fact or fiction? 19% of you said fact. 81% said fiction. So I think most of you are looking at this with a very... Uh, you know, you're looking at this realistically and, and thinking like, hey, yeah, this is, there's nothing credible to it yet, right? And I think that's the logical conclusion to get to uh, as far as this whole neighbor situation goes. You know, until something comes out where it's concrete evidence, where it's, you know, um, you don't see people like uh, Adam Schefter or Ian Rappaport reporting this type of stuff. I mean, maybe they have, I, I, but I'm pretty sure that they haven't. You don't see, really super credible people making reports about neighbors and his character and yada, yada, yada. I mean, you, you don't see that yet. So I don't really believe much of it. I think it's just a load, a load of bull right now. So, you know, until we see something different, you know, we can't really say much. Big Bake. What's up, Big Bake? Thanks for tuning in. Um, 
Uh, he is, Burks is on the path of becoming the kill Henry, a big, strong physical receiver who had a lot of great college production, but for whatever reasons, that's a good comparison. I think right now you could probably say that. That's a good comparison. And look, I mean, we've seen Burks make plays. Like that sideline play he made, I, I don't I think it might have been last season or the season before where he made that catch on the sideline and, and you know, toe tapped it in and freaking ran it all the way. I mean, that was one of those plays where you were like, okay, this is what we could have in Traylon Burks. Like this is the type of skill, athletic ability that, <laughs> that we could have in Traylon Burks. You know what I mean? Like, and it just, you know, the injuries have really hurt him. You know, the asthma, I think has been an issue too. Then I say it's not an issue, but I think it has been an issue, especially in the beginning. You know, it said it took him a while to get his NFL lungs and all that um, going. So, you know, and he's had various injuries. And of course the concussion, that play it was the long pass and he got smashed on that concussion. Like it was, it was awful. And that wasn't his fault. You know what I mean? You can't blame somebody for getting a concussion. It's part of the game. You know. Um, Chico says, good morning from California. Good morning to you, man. Good morning to you. And it's probably what, like eight there? Or nine? Nine fifty-four? No, probably like eight fifty-four there or seven fifty-four. So thanks for tuning in, Chico. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. We'd love to have you on board. Um, Grant says, I'm also a Titans fan, preference left tackle. Rossi, I will get you that on excellent. Yeah, thanks, man. Definitely. Yeah, just tag me in it. And we'll uh, we'll repost it. If you haven't followed me on Twitter yet, please do at Titans Rossi. We also have a, 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 a Twitter page for the network at Titan Up Network. Um, but follow us both. Follow me. I got a pretty big following on Twitter. If you want to communicate with me directly, that's how you can. Uh, my my messages are open, um, so you can DM me on Twitter. A lot of people do talking about football, and I I love it. You know, I do. Um, so Cooper Klopp, thanks for tuning in, buddy. He said, "Who is your favorite NFL player? Um, like currently or past?" Um, that's a tough one, man. That, you know, obviously I'm going to go with the Titans player. I would say on the current roster, if it's, if we're talking about my favorite Titans player as of right now on the current roster, um, I would have to say Jeffrey Simmons, man. I mean, I, you know, just the way he embodies the team and the culture and I'd have to go with Jeffrey Simmons, you know, um, and honestly, I love D Hop too, man. I love how D Hop doesn't complain. He's a team first guy. He goes out there and he just gets it done. Like, just gets it done, man. And uh, you haven't heard D Hop talking about, oh, I want to go to another team. He's not a prima donna. Like, he wants to build something with the Tennessee Titans. And I love that about D Hop, man. Like, he, he helps other players. Um, off the field, and I know that for a fact because I've I've heard it from certain players, and um, it's really cool that he's doing that. You know, like, and uh, he's one of my favorites. Now, as far as like the NFL wide, Derrick Henry. I mean, hands down, it's Derrick Henry. Like, he's he's probably my all time. I mean, it's hard. I would say that Steve McNair. And Derrick Henry are my all-time favorite Titans. Then kind of second tier would be Eddie George, Derrick Mason, Blaine Bishop, Javon Kurse, Keith Bullock, Cortland Finnegan. Um, I know I'm missing a lot of people. Uh, obviously, Chris Johnson. Chris Johnson would be S tier. So my three S tiers would be Johnson. McNair and um, Derrick Henry. I'd say, you know, Eddie George is close, but why check those guys? But my S tier, S tier would be Johnson, McNair, and Henry. we should do that. We should do a tier list on the on the roster report one night. That would be a lot of fun. 
we could do the tier thing like they do on YouTube, put S tier and all that, and and do a Titans tier list. I know somebody's done it out there, but I, I think it'd be a lot of fun to do that. You guys could weigh in. We could, you know, um, get you guys thoughts and you could help us out with it. Do like a, like a you know, all time Titans uh, tier list. That would be pretty cool. Um, I was told a while back that neighbors is a really passionate guy. Um, yeah. So, I mean, uh, you know, that's what you need in that wide receiver position. Uh, you know, you need the passion. You need, you know, you need some of that zest. You need some of that moxie when you're a wide receiver. You know what I mean? Like I loved what Calvin yeah. Ridley said about, how he felt like he was young and he felt like he was 25 and, you know, he could run with the best of them. You know, he, he could play, he could run, he could this and that with the old, with the young. I love that sound bit. And I think we're going to get a lot of good sound bits from Calvin Ridley this season. You know, um, I love what he talked about um, as far as that goes. And I think you need that as you need some of that as a wide receiver. And there's a fine line between like being like cocky and arrogant, you know, or not cock, like cocky and what's the word? Hopeful, positive, um, confident. That's what I'm looking for. A brain fart. There's there's a very big different uh, uh, a fine line in arrogance and confidence. You know what I mean? Like. And as a wide receiver, you need confidence. You need you need that in this league, you know? Um, yeah, oh, yeah, that, you know, I'm going to post a video later this week. And shout out to Preston, good buddy of mine, Preston Thorne. He is a Titans collector. He's on, if you guys, he's a great follow on Twitter. I think it's at Preston Thorne. We went to his house yesterday for a little Titans get-together, a little WrestleMania watch party. And he has got one of the most incredible collections I have ever seen of Titans memorabilia. Like, I mean, it is absolutely mind blowing, mind blowing. Two or three rooms full of stuff, game worn jerseys, game worn helmets. It was insane, man. It was absolutely incredible. I've never seen anything like it in my life. Um, so, yeah, yeah, here's a picture on my phone. You guys can see it. That is a game-worn... Sorry, my ring light is showing in the way. That is a game-worn Steve McNair helmet. It's a, it's amazing. Uh, it's from 2000, the 2003 season. And there's one below it, I think, that was from the 2001 season. And I... I got to hold this yesterday. I got to hold this, touch it. You know, it was incredible. Like, game worn. I mean, there were grass stains on it and everything. Like, I mean, just, I got chills, you know, like the rock does. I got chills holding that helmet. I mean, it was just, it was phenomenal. It was absolutely phenomenal. Uh, shout out to um, Preston. Oh, this is cool, too, if y'all could see it. These are game worn cleats from Jeffrey Simmons. Literally. Like it's amazing. So game worn cleats uh November 8, 2022 versus the Bears. So you could see how beat up they are, how scuffed. Um I would have to check his sacks for that game, but those were actually worn in the game and somehow Preston got them. It's insane, man. So, um, anyways, guys, um, I appreciate you. I got to get going. Got some things I got to do today. But thank you guys so much for tuning in. You guys have been amazing. It's been a great show, really. Like, we really appreciate it. If you haven't subscribed to us yet, please do. We've been rocking and rolling. There's 164 people in here right now, you know, on a Monday at 11 o'clock Central Time. So if you haven't hit the like button yet, please do help us get the 50 likes today. That would be fantastic. We are at, drum roll, how many likes we got here? I can't see. I don't know why I can't see. Let me switch to my other thing. 
Come on. 22 likes. So not bad. So shout out to you guys. Uh, maybe we'll hit 50 at some point today. But I do appreciate you guys. You guys get a big applause. So we appreciate you guys. Um, last comment here. Uh, let me take this off the screen, guys. Sorry about that. Um, okay, where are we at? Where are we at? All right. I'm looking forward on how we utilize our receivers this upcoming season, especially if you add neighbors. One of my frustrations with previous OCs was how often AJ was consistently on the field. Right. No, I mean, yes, we would scream till we were blue in the face. Why isn't AJ on the field? Why isn't Derrick Henry on the field? Why isn't blah, 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 blah. I don't think we're going to have that issue with Cal Lane. Of course, you know, nothing's going to be perfect, but I don't think we're going to have that issue. Um, you know, there's going to be some growing pains, but I think we're going to like it. Oh, that's awesome, man. That's awesome. And shout out to you, Jeff. Thanks for tuning in. Thank you. Uh, Kyron, we appreciate it. Or I, I know I'm saying, probably saying that wrong, but thank you so much for tuning in, guys. And uh, we will see you next time. Tighten up that like button if you haven't yet. Tune in tonight, 8.30 for the Power Hour. He will be live. And um, tomorrow night, we got a really special thing going on. I can't really reveal the details yet, but you guys are going to love it. I guarantee it. And um, you know, uh, uploads going to be live doing a special type of show and you guys are actually, you know, absolutely going to love it. So tighten up everybody. We will see you next time. Let's go. <laughs>